it felt hopeless. It felt, I was angry. I was really, really angry. They knew where I lived and they were coming to my door and they were trying to connect with me. And so it was a little scary. I really wanted to make a difference. I really did. The, the, the amount of consumer harm that I saw going out there in the marketplace was just, it just, it, it, it made me sick. It was a pay cut, a serious haircut on the paycheck to go do it. Uh, it was a big risk that way, but I was more excited than ever. The money didn't matter. I just wanted the experience. And so began my adventure at the Financial Services Commission of Ontario. I was on the job for you know, a very short period of time, maybe a week or two, and then it was like, here you go. Here you go. And I knew what it was. Immediately I knew what it was because you know, they solicited um, the mortgage broker community heavily. They used us as salespeople to bring the money in. So what was your, um, your, your assessment of it before you started working Junk. There? Junk. I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. It was a terrible idea. It was a way to lose your money. Why are they using that language? I looked at it and I went, this, this, this does not look good. When you're guaranteeing 8% returns in a low interest rate environment on speculative commercial construction projects, The way what happened is, so people invested their money, they got some interest payments for a while, then they stopped. You know, they started questioning their salespeople who, you know, started stringing them along, stringing them along, because they're being strung along, strung along as to, you know, uh, the status of the project. And when I looked at the number of transactions, I saw that as representing a household or investor or consumer. I saw the number of transactions as number of people. I saw that as people. I wasn't expecting to see how many people. I was not expecting to see the, the, uh, the, the dollar volume of business. I was, about, I was, I was with the, the regulator about four months and I walked into the director's office and I said, I've got it. Let's cut the head off the mushroom. Right? The common denominator is Olympia Trust. Every single investment is going through Olympia Trust because they have to. And instead of the, you know, congratulations, we have a great regulatory moment type reaction, what I got was, I looked over at him and his face had turned scarlet red. And he slammed his hand down on the desk and he said to me through clenched teeth, well, I guess you're going to have to open up a file now, won't you? And then he pointed at the door as if to dismiss me. Didn't say another word, just pointed at the door like that telling me get out of my office and so I did and there was witnesses to this and uh, it was um, it was bizarre world I mean I felt like I'd done something wrong and that it was caused me to want to look into it further but that was my first sign that something wasn't right the most senior compliance officer turned to me and said, Krista, if you keep going this, with this, they're gonna make your life hell and you will lose your job. There's a closet full of bodies out of that division of Fisco under that management. And so that was the moment where I had to decide. But it was an easy decision for me, to be honest. It was an easy decision because I wasn't there for me. I was there to protect consumers and I knew that every day that passed that I didn't do something someone else was going to be taking their, their life savings from a nice safe investment vehicle and putting into something where they most likely were going to lose their money. So I would work that file to the extent that I could work it and then you know it would have to be approved to, to get moved on up and 
company wouldn't do it. The director wouldn't do it. And when I went through all the previous complaints that, on files that had been closed, right, and there was a good number of them, and they were all closed with no findings despite the clear breaches, despite evidence being produced and handed over to the regulator for analysis. It made no sense at all. It was just really clear that they had no intentions on actioning these files. And I did not know why. I don't know why. This could have been stopped in its tracks before, you know, Fortress had babies, had its offspring, before almost a billion dollars in investment money was taken out of 15,000 households. But the duty of care that we have as financial professionals is, is equal and important, as equal and important to the, you know, what a doctor does for somebody. Right? We are the doctors for their financial health. This is our duty of care. And we are ruining lives. I started absorbing that stress and feeling the weight of the world on my shoulders because I realized that if I couldn't make this happen, it wasn't going to happen. This is not about Fisco. This is beyond. This is bigger than this.